What a, what a good time to be a believer. What a good time to be in love with Jesus. Mm. The, the devil has a say. The world has a say. But my God has the final say. Mm. He's, got a good, he's got a good opinion of you. His thoughts of you are always good. Always. Well, what about when I, he saw that. You know what he says? I got redemption. I got reconciliation. I got healing. I, he says, the greater one inside of you, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Amen. Well, we need to get in that place. But today I just want to talk about this and finalizing this message on the gift, that he is the gift Amen. that lasts a lifetime. Yeah. A lifetime warranty on this relationship with God. He didn't wear out. You realize that? He doesn't get tired. Well, well, if, if that's not true, Pastor, then why is it that some people, they give their heart to Jesus and then they just, they fall by the wayside? And I was thinking about that. You know, the, the parable of the seed, some of it's sown on the roadway and gets trampled down. Some gets planted in rocks that are too hard and not no depth of soil. And some of the birds come, come away and eat or the, or the weeds choke out. But then there's the good ground. One that hears it and does something with it. And it bore a harvest, some 30, 60, and 100 fold. You know, instead of trying to figure out why people aren't making it, we need to understand that everybody can make it. Everybody can live for God. Whoever, my Bible says, whoever calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved. I tell you what, if you don't learn any other sentence in Christianity and life today, you need to learn this sentence. Actually, it is an, it's a passionate request. And you, we need to learn how to say more often, help me, Jesus. Yes. Can we practice that this morning? And say, help me, Jesus. Help me, Jesus. Help me, Jesus. Some, some of y'all, it's been a while since you said it. My, my dad was not really a church-going guy, but he was smart when it came to when there were uh, really passionate situations, who to call out to. You're driving too fast, and he sees those red and blue lights in his rearview mirror. He didn't say, help me, Oprah. He didn't say, help me, Trump, help me, Biden. He didn't say that. He saw them lights, help me, Jesus. Help me, Jesus. There's no shame in your game when you call out to Jesus. He's trying to help you before you made the mistake in the first place, but he'll wait on you. If you he'll wait till you do that stuff. You tell, help me, Jesus. And he's a very present help in time of need. You know, this whole thing about the gift that lasts a lifetime. You know, what I love to do is I love to buy gifts for people, especially kids. It's so fun. That, and when they get the gift, they use it up and they wear it out. I love it. I, I hate when I see a, uh, a, a gift that I bought for somebody, and I catch up with them later on, six months later, a year later, five years later, and that toy looks brand new, or those clothes look brand new, or that cologne's still full, or perfume's still full in the bottle. I'm like, listen, we need, we need to get past this. I'm not going to be materialistic today. I'm, talk, I mean, I'm getting down into the spiritual stuff today. But we need to have better, more authentic, trusting relationships. You buy something for somebody, and they're like, mm, I can't wear that. That hurts my head. That perfume cologne hurts my head. Take it back. We have gift receipts. Go get something that you like. Setting that thing on the counter and for five years and, and you, you're not getting rid of it because I gave it to you? That's so silly. <laughs> Boots that don't fit, clothes that are too tight, food you can't eat because you're allergic to, but she gave it to me, he gave it to me. That makes absolutely no sense. Take advantage of those gift receipts. But I need to tell you something. The reason why... I like those gifts that I give to people that they use and they, and they wear out. It's because they enjoyed it. Amen. It was something that, that, that had meaning to their life. Yes. And, and I want you to know Jesus is the gift to us that God wants us to enjoy and put to use every single day of our life. Yes. It's a shame that there are Christians today 
that say, oh, I used to go to church. I used to be a praying man or a woman. There's no but on the end of that. It just needs, you got to get back into it. You got to get back into that relationship with God. I hear a lot of people say this. You know, I don't want to just pray to God, pray to our Heavenly Father over trivial, minute, seeming, seemingly meaningless things because he's a great big God. He's got a lot of very important stuff that he needs to do. I'm talking to him about getting a promotion. But what about world peace? And feeding people in third world nations and healing people of stage four cancer. God needs to keep his eye on that ball. Let me just help you. God's a whole lot bigger than you think. He's a whole, he can take care of all the little details and all your details too. Think about him being the creator of the universe. The creator of time. The creator of every cell in your body and every animal that's ever lived that's living today. The way that seasons change, the way that the moon, the when it when it uh, when it rotates a, a, around the earth and the sun and the, the, this whole thing, how the tides flow in and out on the beach to cleanse the oceans. God did that. We didn't do that. God is smart. He doesn't leave out any of the details. Ask. Jesus said. And you shall receive. Seek and you'll find. Knock and the door will be open. He wants a relationship with you. He doesn't want you to have the big giant gold Bible sitting on your coffee table that is the symbol that you go to or you've been to at church twice a year. It's not what he's looking for. What he's looking for is an intimate, personal relationship where you can talk to him and he can talk to you, which is even more important, about everything. Amen. You know the beautiful thing about God is he doesn't get tired of hearing us. He doesn't get, he doesn't get wore out. I remember the little kids that come up to me, my, my children, love my kids. And I always want my kids to come up to me and always will. Can't wait for the grandkids to do this. I said, daddy, 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 daddy. Daddy, daddy, I got, I got a question. Dad, dad, daddy, 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 what about the dad, 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 dad? Now, when you're in the middle of, of, of taking care of some business, every once in a while, you'll go, what? Again? But I'm so quick. The Holy Spirit provokes me, prompts me, chastises me. I say, aren't you glad you have a child that Amen. can interrupt you? Come on, baby. Come here. Come here, boy. God wants to be that way for us. So stop thinking he doesn't want to hear you. He's the gift that lasts forever. Stop thinking that you're going to wear him out or get him tired with your request. Isaiah 40, 28. I, I love what this says. It says, do you not know? Meaning some people don't know. Have you not heard, means somebody hadn't heard this, the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth does not become weary or tired. Somebody say, yay, Jesus. Yay, Jesus. His understanding is inscrutable, means it goes way beyond our comprehension. He, our God, gives strength to the weary and to him who lacks might, he increases power. <laughs> That's so good. And though youths grow weary and tired and vigorous young men stumble badly, yet those who wait for the Lord will gain new strength. Somebody say new strength. <laughs> They'll mount up with wings like eagles. They will run and not get tired. They'll walk and will not become weary. This becomes very relevant to us today in these in this season that we're in right now how many of you ever bought a christmas present that required batteries and on christmas eve you realize you didn't have no batteries it kind of messed up some of the festivities on your 
after your Christmas present opening ceremony, huh? Or you got batteries and you were so happy that you did not forget. But little Johnny played with that toy so long the batteries wore out. And you rotate the batteries, you lick the batteries, you flip the batteries, you shake the batteries. You put them in the eye, you rub them with a hot washcloth, whatever. You think something's going to work, rub, put some salt on them, whatever. You think your battery's going and your battery doesn't work unless you got the rechargeable ones, right? I want you to know God's batteries never run out. Never run out. He just keeps going and going and going and going and going. And going and going and going. He never wears, God never wears out. He never gets tired. He loves us. He loves us. He's the best gift ever. He always will be. There's no competition when it comes to him. You know, his favor and his love. Think about this part of his gift. It's for a lifetime. For the rest of your life. When you give your heart to Jesus, guess how much he's going to love you and how long he's going to love you? For a long time. How long is long? For the rest of your life. How long is long? After you breathe your last breath, he's still going to love you. He's going to love you for all eternity. We're going to sing his praise real loud because when we finally realize how much he loves us, There'll be a song that comes out of our heart that we'll never be able to shake. Psalms 30, verse 5. Mm. Hmm. It says, His anger is but for a moment. His favor is for a lifetime. Weeping may last for the night, but a shout of joy comes in the morning. You know, there's a lot of people today that have a perverted, distorted view of the love of God. They base their love on God on this premise. They, they get to thinking that God's love for us is at the same level as our love for him. If you're living in that land, if you're living in that mentality, you're not going to live for God very long. Because how many of you know that your feelings change? Sickness comes, tragedy arrives, circumstances, seasons of intensity that get you a little bit distracted sometime and you, for, you forgot to pray or you didn't want to pray. Anybody ever been in a place where you didn't want to pray? You didn't say God fix it. You wanted to fix it. What happens when you try to fix it when you know God's supposed to fix it? Usually it doesn't get fixed. But we base... This, this mindset that, that God loves us to the, the, the degree that we love him. And that's just simply not true. I know the Bible says draw near to God and he'll draw near to us. That doesn't mean he doesn't love us when we're not drawing near to him. Think about this. The prodigal son, where was the father when the prodigal son was coming home? He was standing there on the porch, and when he saw him coming from afar away, he said, that's my boy. That's my boy. My boy's coming home. Go get the calf. <laughs> Where's that ring? The robe, the sandals, everything. We're throwing a party tonight because my boy who was lost is now found. He's coming home. You got to understand, Galatians 6, 7 says, do not be deceived. God is not mocked. Whatever a man sows, he's going to reap. God does not cancel that out. Grace does not cancel that out. What grace does is when you're reaping what you've sown, God makes a way where there seems to be no way where he can rescue in the middle of reaping. Yeah. He's a good God. Yeah. His anger may be for a moment. He does get angry. But his favor is for a lifetime. I love the movie The Shack. There was a word I believe the Holy Spirit was saying about different people. It says, oh, that's my favorite one. That person is my favorite one. Talk about somebody else. Oh, that's my favorite one. No matter who it is. Oh, that's my favorite one. 
Oh, I think he looks at us like that. Oh, I, I remember when I created that precious one. Oh, they're my favorite. You say, God has favorites? Yeah, he does. They're all of us. We're all his favorite. Isn't that amazing that we don't have to be in competition for his love? Oh, his love is an amazing gift in our life. I'm going to ask you this. What do you do when you get an amazing gift? Let me ask you this first. Did you, hey, don't get mad if you didn't, but if you got an amazing gift this year from somebody, can you just raise your hand real close? Oh, that's so nice. You guys that didn't get an amazing gift, can I, can I just help you how to get an amazing gift? Send a little three-line text. You know what would be amazing? <laughs> well, some of us got amazing gifts that we didn't even, didn't even expect. I didn't even expect. That's the way it is with God. He gives us amazing gifts. His favor is an amazing gift. There's no reason why that door should be open, but it's open. Why? Because of the favor of God. I've always wanted a relationship where somebody loved me and cared for me and, and had integrity in the And you have it now? You think your good looks got it? Maybe a little bit. But you know what really got it for you? God's favor. God's favor. He's so good. But when you get an amazing gift, don't be ashamed of it. Don't hide it. Show it to your friends. It's not that you're being braggadocious. It's just you're appreciating, wow, look at what she gave me. Look at what he gave me. Look at what my kid made for me. Whatever it is, just, it's okay to, to say thank you and to let other people know. There's people that want to celebrate when you get blessed. They really, there really are. There's some people that, that, that don't throw rocks at everything that happens in your life. That's okay. Realize you got people that throw rocks at you and talk bad about you, but on the other hand, you got great friends that will celebrate your blessing. Can we give God praise for good friends? Oh, he's so good. He is the absolute best gift ever. The best gift ever. <laughs> How many of you have been in the, the, the place in this age of technology where you bought a uh, um, semi fancy car or a computer computer and you notice a lot of times when you buy the fancy computer or the fancy car as soon as you buy those things they will say oh we have a class we have an app we have a class and we have coaches that will teach you how to use your car or use your computer and you're like oh Nobody needs to teach me how to drive a car. You put the key in the ignition, and now some of you are shocked because you don't put a key in the ignition anymore. You put the key in the ignition, and you, you step on the brake, you put it in drive, and you go down the road, you go, yeah, and you think it's all good. And some of you are shocked when you find out that there's certain things that cars have now they didn't used to have. How I many of you know that God, his kingdom is advancing and God's introducing new, to, new things to us all the time? Thank God for technology and all those other things. But, you know, they send you to a class and they go, well, yeah, um, you know, you don't have to just look down there. There's this little thing, this little button you push and, the, and the, um, the, the, your speed and distance and direction and radio station actually shows up in the middle of your screen. And it just kind of floats in front of your face and you're like, oh, I'm not ready for this. Or we were driving in Amy's vehicle the other day and driving down the road and not paying attention. And they have this little button you can push. And if you start to veer off the lane, the car will say, you're obviously not paying attention. It doesn't say it, but it does it. It pulls the vehicle back in. I'm like, hey, something's wrong with the vehicle. Amy's like, there's nothing wrong with the vehicle. It's you. It's showing you you're veering out of the lane. It's like, if I would have took the class, I would be a lot less freaked out. You know what the big class for us is? Or computers? Some of y'all are hunting and pecking, trying, frustrated with your computer. You need to go to the store that you bought the computer from and say, yeah, give me all the classes. Just sign me up. Show me how to do that. And you're like, wow, I didn't even know a computer could do that. Can I just say this? 
There's a lot of things God wants to bless your life with. He wants to do for you, in you, and through you. But you don't know because you haven't taken the class yet. You know what the class is? It's the Word of God. The class is spending time in prayer. The, t- the, the, the class is hanging around with people that have lived for Jesus for a really long time, that have under- understand the blessings and the benefits of living for God. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget none of his benefits. The problem is he's blessed us and given us benefits, but we can't say bless the Lord on my soul, forget none of his benefits. You can't forget them because you don't know them in the first place. And it's time that we, we start educating ourselves about the good things and the blessings of God. Psalms 34. I love what David is saying. He says, I, I will bless the Lord at all times. Come on, somebody. And his praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul will make boast in the Lord. The humble will hear it and rejoice. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. If it's messed up, can I tell you how to get it unmessed up? Get somebody. The Joshua's need to find their Caleb's. The Miriam's, come on. She needs to, she needs to start leading worship and get, get Moses and Aaron along with it and say, we're going to praise the Lord today. We need to get people with us. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. Look at these benefits. I sought the Lord and he answered me and delivered me from all of my fears. Say all. They look to him and were radiant, and their faces will never be ashamed. This poor man cried, and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all his troubles. You're talking about a great benefit, a great blessing. Mm. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him, and he rescues them. Look at what happens when we fear the Lord. He says, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. How blessed is the man who takes refuge in him. Oh, fear the Lord, you his saints. For to those who fear the Lord here, look at this, there is no want. Everybody's running and searching for the thing that they think they want. If you just spend some more time just saying, God, you're all I want. You're all I need. (laughs) You'll find out there's a lot of things that you thought you needed, but you didn't. The young man do lack the young lions do lack and suffer hunger but those who seek the lord they shall not be in want for any good thing come you children and listen to me and i'll teach you the fear of the lord who is the man who desires life and loves length of days that he may see good he says you want this you want a good life you want a good long life here it is keep your tongue from evil and your lips from speaking deceit. Depart from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. God's saying this, I want you to do your part and watch me do mine. Hmm. The face of the Lord is against evildoers to cut off the memory from them of them from the earth. But the righteous cry and the Lord hears and delivers them out of all their troubles. The Lord is near to the brokenhearted and save those who are crushed in spirit. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. He keeps all of his bones and none of them are broken. I know a lot of people refer to that being Jesus, but I want you to know God wants to keep your bones from being broken too. Evil shall slay the wicked and those who hate the righteous will be condemned. The Lord redeems the soul. The soul, your mind, your will, your emotions, your intellect. God wants to redeem the soul of his servants. And none of those who take refuge in him will be condemned. There's people that want to condemn you. There's people that want to talk bad about you. But you know what? Let him be the redeemer of your soul. So I want you to use the gift. Share the gift. But don't don't you dare put your gift on a shelf. Unwrap it. Put it on. Because 1 Peter 2, 9 says, you're a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for God's own possession so that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of darkness and into his marvelous light. For once, here it is, 
Come on, be honest. You once were not a people, but now are the people of God. You once had not received mercy, but now have received the mercy of God. This gift that lasts a lifetime, that mercy that you once received will hit you tomorrow and the next day and the next day and the next year, the next decade and for the rest of your life and for all eternity. His mercy and his grace is everlasting. Somebody give God praise. Don't be ashamed to show off this gift that lasts a lifetime. Let me just tell you this. It was expensive. Don't you dare put it in a closet. Use your gift to change the world. That's what Jesus was saying in Matthew 5, 13. He, he, he nailed it. He said, you, us. Everybody say, you means me. You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt has become tasteless, how can it be made salty again? It's no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled underfoot by men. You, he is, but God wants us to as well because he, where does God live? He lives in us. You are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor does anyone light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand, it gives light to all that are in the house. And he says, let your light shine before men in such a way that they may see your good works. Mm Mm-hmm. And glorify your Father who is in heaven. Amen. God so wants us to get out of the mindset that, that church and Christianity is a religious obligation where we just put him and everything pertaining to him, including the church, and we just put it on a shelf somewhere. Right. We just have it boxed up in this nice, pretty little place in our life, in a, in a part of our heart, but, it, but God doesn't have our heart. I've heard people say this. They say, my faith and my walk with God, I just keep it to myself. That breaks his heart. It makes absolutely no sense to me that people say that. It's completely contrary to how Jesus told us to live. You know what it's like? It's like a formal living room. Does a formal living room even make sense? We don't do this so much anymore. Now we have pool tables and, and game rooms and, and, and places where we do small group instead of a formal living room. But back in the day, some of, some of you kids really aren't going to, you're gonna like, are you serious? People actually did that. There's a, like, usually it's over towards the entrance of the house. Actually, I had an aunt a long time ago. My, it was my granny's sister had this. You walk into the house. And there was a golden rope from one side of the entrance way into this room. And it kind of tapered down and it, had, and it was tied to the other side. Don't you dare go past that golden rope. <laughs> it was carpet. It was white carpet that no foot had ever stepped in. Cherry furniture. Little knickknacks, porcelain, everything, just all that stuff. The couches had the, that intricate stitching fabric that was like a European tapestry woved into the, and then the, the royal uh, deep blue, navy blue curtains, velour curtains with gold sashes. And me and my brother Billy actually wasn't thinking. She was babysitting us. And we were like, oh, this is a cool room. Let's get up in here. I thought we were going to die. Because <laughs> nobody is supposed to be in that. Especially little kids that have been running around the mud all day. And I got to thinking. I've seen this happen a few times and it absolutely breaks my heart. But I always think about my, my great aunt. I see a lot of estate sales lately. And these people that have had the, the rope and the furniture that no one ever sat in, the carpet that no child ever rolled on, teacups that nobody ever drank out of, and the, the family didn't get it. It was part of the deal where the state gets all split up and they receive the monetary pieces. And I'm like, they never used it one time and at the end of their life their stuff goes off to some stranger's house I thought 
my God, my God. That's not the way life is supposed to be. And life is not supposed to be that way with Jesus. We're not supposed to take the beauty and the majesty and the value and the excellency of who he is and put him on a shelf. Let me just tell you, I'm not, I'm not reducing Jesus to the furniture that I'm talking about or the rooms that I, I call them family activity rooms now. Let's scrap the formal living room and let's go ahead, buy some furniture that everybody can. I'm not saying jump on to tear up, but everybody gets to relax on. If the dog gets on the couch, just wipe the dog's feet off and go ahead and let him get back up there. If you didn't get a coaster for your coffee table, well, we got a rag. We can wipe it up. We need to be able to use these things and let, let fam, be family, live and love and let people into your space. But most importantly, let God have his way in every part of our life. Stop compartmentalizing him to some place that nobody sees his value. Oh, come on. He is the gift that lasts a lifetime. And he wants to be intricately involved in every area. He wants you to experience him every day. Will you stand your feet? I went over just a little bit. I'm sorry. We only had one service, so there we go. I love you guys. I really do. Thank you. He is, he is the best gift ever. And, and, and I'm going to, I'm not going to, I'm really do, doing my best to not, y'all know that I am, I'm not going to go political, but I am going to say this. We're living in the middle of a culture war like this country has never seen. Amen. The church has no business sitting back and just asking God to just take us out of here. I, I, hey, listen, I know, I know theologically uh, there's a whole lot of people that are like, man, they, please let it be today. I just say, hey, if we could, if we could bypass some of the storms that are heading our way, I, why is it wrong to say, please get me out of here? But maybe God wants us to be here for a little bit and change this world around us and introduce them to the greatest gift ever. Amen. Come, Come on, church. Come on, church. It's time that we break down those walls and get rid of, God's not giving us a spirit of fear, but power, love, and a sound mind. And, and when somebody calls you a name, I want you to do something. I need you to say this. When the name comes towards you, say, really? Is that who you think I am? Why? And get into the conversation. Some people are just real good at lobbing these, these bombs that just destroy relationships. Don't fall for that. Realize this. If somebody threw a, a, a word bomb at you, don't get offended. Psalms 119 verse 165 says, Great peace of they which love thy law, and nothing shall offend them. Be like Jesus where he says, Love your enemies. Bless those that curse you. And let's win this this cultural war that's happening and treat everybody as if they are somebody that Jesus died in a cross for. Why? Because they are. They are. Come on, church. Come on, church. Let his gift flow out of you. So if you're here today and, and maybe you came to church because you're staying with family and friends or, or you're in town, well, I just want to say thank you for being here. But I want to say this, this God knew exactly who was going to be here today. I'm sitting here talking about a gift that maybe you've not experienced. Well, we're not going to just let that slip by. I want you to know God so loved the world that he gave his only son, Jesus, that whosoever would believe in him would not perish but have everlasting life. What, what? What John 3.16 is actually saying there, he's, he's saying, he's highlighting the fact that sin separates us from God. And there had to be atonement for that. So God gives us the perfect sacrifice of his son Jesus to die on a cross, to pay for our sins. If that we, we confess our sins and we receive him as Savior and Lord, we're saved. There's no more being afraid when we breathe our last breath. Oh, I think I did enough good. No, we never do enough good. We just receive the good that he did for us. Learn how to be a good receiver. Come on, come on.
Come on, take your hands. We're not leaving anybody out today. This is so easy. Turn your hands like this and say this. Lord Jesus, today I confess I've sinned and I ask you to forgive me. Cleanse me of all my sin, all my separation from you. Today, I receive you into my heart as my Lord and Savior, my great shepherd, my protector. From this day forward and the rest of my life, I declare I am born again. I'm made new. I'm a new creature. I'm going to live for you. I need you to teach me, lead me, and someday receive me into eternity. In Jesus' name. And everybody said, come on, give me praise, church. Love you guys. Thanks again for watching River of Praise. We hope that we inspired you, encouraged you. And if we did, would you please share this video with your friends and family? Also, if you'd like to support River of Praise, there's a link on the bottom of the screen you can click to give. Thanks again for watching.